Welcome to It Is What It Is, a true crime podcast. Hopefully everybody has a good Friday. It's the last day of the week. You've made it. You've succeeded. Congratulations. My guest fell through this week and I put off my episode to do that and it fell through. So no fear. I still have an episode to tell you guys about. Duh. Because I have yet to tell you guys about the sports documentary that I want to tell you guys about. And so, if you guys have Showtime and you haven't watched it, I really question what you're doing with your lives. But, you can also go do like a free month or like free two weeks. You can watch it in a day. It's a one series, one season, five episodes, and it's called Outcry. In this movie, well, documentary, it's it's not a movie, whatever, is just absolutely amazing. So it's about Greg Kelly, and he is a football prodigy. Like, the dude's just amazing athletically. And... I think I first heard about this either on Pat McAfee or Joe Rogan. I'm not 100% sure. One of those two podcasts were talking about it first. I think it was Pat McAfee. Maybe it was. I don't know. Anyway, it was one of those two. And then I was like, hmm, what is this? So I watched it. And just his athletic ability just blows me away. I can't get over it. So anyway, so Greg Kelly... It, it, he is in his uh, senior year, I believe, of high school when this happens to him, his last year of school. And his, his family, his parents are going through like medical issues. And so a friend, his friend that also plays football with him, his family is like, hey, Come live with us. Kind of like a... Oh, God, what is that movie? The Blind Side? Kind of like that. She wanted to have her own Blind Side moment where her the two boys played together, okay? And so you have this football god and the football ball god jockey like that her son is not athletic okay he wasn't and even everybody in the documentary and you can watch the games and everything else and he just wasn't and so she's like i can have my blindside moment and i can be that all-star because there this is in texas i should say sorry this is in texas and in texas from what i hear football is next to cleanliness and godliness like you just don't fuck with it and so he was a football star at leander high school and i guess that like literally it was like you play ball, you're a cheerleader, bam, that's your life. When you're, when you birth a boy, you hope to God he's a football star at his school. So, like I said, she wants her blindside moment. And so she's like, hey, you can come live with me and I'll be the one that you get to go off and to college and the NFL, and then everything will always come back to me. You know what I mean? Okay. So, he was a sophomore. Wait, that's not that's not your last year. That's your senior. So, almost his last year. And he has scholarships out the ass to full ride scholarships. And he wants to play for, I believe, Texas, like the Texan Longhorns or whatever. And 
he has a girlfriend, a gorgeous girlfriend. She's adorable. She's a cheerleader. And he is mentality focused. Football will make my life complete. It will give me the NFL. It will give me a future. It will get me college. It will get me all of these things. And like I said, football was this dude's calling. So anywho, he is leaving, living, breathing, sleeping, the gym, practice, school, girlfriend. And so he's working at all of this. Well, the home that he went to go stay in, his friend's house, she also runs a daycare out of her house, right? And so one day he's at like the gym and his brother calls him and he's like, hey, whatever you do, don't come back here. Like some shit's popped off. And he's like, well, what is the issue? And they're like, oh, we got, there's a four-year-old little boy saying that you molested him. And he laughed at first. He's like, shut the fuck up. Ha ha ha. What? And they were like, no, bro, like for real, for real. And so he calls his precious girlfriend, devastates her. She is not even in Texas. She is in California and he is arrested. And before he was in the newspaper for picking his college, cause he had come out and said, Hey, this is the college I choose. They did the whole hat ceremony, the whole like, da 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 da. And then the next thing he's in the paper for is football all-star molest four-year-old little boy. And so the cops go on the news and they're like, so we did arrest Greg. He did, this is what he's accused of doing. This is where he lived. If anybody else thinks that there could be a possibility of something happening, let us know. So next thing the world knows is there's another little boy who comes forward and is like, yep, me too. And so he's in jail on one charge and then bam, here comes a second one. And he's sitting in jail like, what the fuck? He has no idea what's going on. He can't even, he's trying to think in his head like, who, who, what, where, when, why? Like, I don't have any idea. And he tells them, I have no idea. You know what I mean? Like, he's like, no, I sure didn't. And if he is accused of this, this is 25 years to life in prison, no parole. Like, this is it. We are, but done. And a quote that they have in this article I'm reading is Kelly says that being a pedophile is worse than being a murderer, which is true. It's 10 times worse. And he says, when you are a pedophile, you're already the scum of the earth. And so when you're going into prison, being with that label, even not even prison, just jail in general, you're out for a hard fucking time. Your day is not going to be an easy peasy lemon squeezy day. It's just not. And so he gets an attorney and the attorney that he gets is referred to by the friend's mom that he was living with. And you find out in court and he's been wrongfully imprisoned for three years and he has to go through the whole court and when he goes through court okay so one little boy is like no that didn't happen and he recants in at court he's like no he didn't touch me nothing happened and then they find him guilty obviously he takes a, he no he they don't find him guilty i'm sorry he takes a deal and I'm sorry. No, he didn't. I totally just fucked that up. I don't know why in my head. Sorry. Anyway, he does not take a deal. They find him guilty. They, he was offered a deal. And he didn't take the deal. That's what I was trying to say. He didn't take the deal because he went off the basis as of these, pe these 12 people are going to hear 
the truth and they're going to set me free. Well, he, no, you know what I mean? Was found, no, he was found guilty. And he was like, where, when he went, was sentenced and everything else, it was like, you can't, he can't, I can't rebut. There we go. Rebuttal. He can't have like, he can't come back and try to say something else. And so like after he's found guilty and they say guilty, life crumbling, right? And his lawyer's like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's so devastating. Remind you, the lawyer, it was at one time a friend of the mom that he was living with. And so the public, after the court and everything else happens, because in court, it didn't sound very good the first time around. It really, like, the one little boy... He does, like, okay, when when he does his outcry, the first little boy, you're like, oh, dude, you had to have done something. Something had to have happened because this four-year-old child just randomly tells his mom that Greg sticks his pee-pee in his mouth. And so, like, I'm sorry, any four-year-old says that questions need to be arose. And so I get it. The fr- like it was very the first little boy very believable believable. I mean there's people to this very day who still believe these children. And so the public hears about it, they lose their shit. And they want a new trial, they want to prove that he did not do this. And so he sits in jail thinking, my life is fucking over. Like, there's no takey backsies. We can't go to court again. I am fucked. And then the public has his back and they start a movement. They get the petitions and everything else. He gets a new lawyer and he gets granted his new trial. Well, when he gets to the new trial, you find out that. The fucking, the friend, quote unquote, friend has already had, he has charges on sex crimes. He, the little boy just said, Greg, his name was Jonathan. If the investigation was done properly, you would have known, like in the first court, you would have known that the room that the little boy describes is Jonathan's room to a T and that Greg didn't even fucking live there when they're trying to say that this happened. He had already moved out of the home. He wasn't even like in there full time. They moved the date of when they think it might have happened. So that way it makes it to where he was in the home at the time. Like they fucked him over is what you find out in the end is that they went off of Greg Kelly. Must be Greg Kelly. That's it. They didn't ask anybody else anything. They didn't question any fucking adult. They didn't ask any other kids in the daycare. They didn't go and do their fucking jobs. They just said, Greg Kelly, let's throw away this boy's life who has football scholarships, who's a football athlete. You know what I mean? Like he is just your all star, your all star every Texas boy, and they just throw away the key. Like these cops just don't give a fuck. And the, it was mainly the prosecutor's office. And so a new prosecutor came into town. He got elected, and that's what led to them really truly in being able to redo it because. It just, he was like, I'm not going to let a young man this young spend his whole entire life in prison for no good reason without being 110% sure that that's where he deserves to be. And so he just, 
I don't, he has the, um, oh God, what are they called? Texas Rangers. Fuck, we're going to go with it because I think that's right. Texas Rangers. It sounds right. Could be a TV show or both. Anyway, he has them redo the investigation and that dude's like, okay, so check it. I can't completely say that he's not on my list of suspects, but definitely not number one. And so like, just bada bing, bada boom. And like, it just, you just see like the trickle of like how this kid just got fucked because these asshole cops in this DA's office are just a bunch of dicks. And they just truly didn't want to admit that they were wrong. And that's really what I believe it came down to is you had all these people in truths being shown like, Hey, you guys jumped to the gun on this. You guys need to do a better investigation on this. And them just being like, we're the grownups. He's not, we're right. He is wrong. And there's even one little snooty girl in the documentary who's like, Nope, no matter what, even after ev everything comes out, she's like, Nope, those little boys are telling the truth. There's no possible way it could be Jonathan because they said Greg. He is a four-year-old child. And even during this court process, they even showed how the second time you can, they videoed little kids going to the doctor, right? And then they did two studies. One of them was they left the kids left the doctor's office, which this kind of seems like a fucked up study, but anyway, and they would implant something bad from the doctor's visit into that child's head. And then a couple of days later they go back and you can see how the children make up big, huge stories of like, he choked me, he beat me and it's videoed. Nothing ever truly happened to these children, but with being misled and everything else, it, that's what happened. Now, something did happen to this little boy, obviously. I believe. I just don't believe it was the right guy. I think maybe even the Jonathan guy told him his name was Greg. Because... I don't know. It just wasn't Greg. Like, it wasn't. And he lost his life, guys. Like, three years in prison. He did get a settlement for being wrongfully convicted. So, like, I mean, he did get that after a long, long time. His poor mother, like, she constantly just stood by her son and her, his, oh, and his girlfriend, Oh my gosh, you would never, you would hope and pray that if anything like this ever happened to you, a woman like her would be by your side. Because no matter what was said about him or anything, she stood by her man and she was like, no, I'm sorry, just not his character, not his kind. And so she was just amazing. I truly was like, this girl is just all star. And, like, he fought for his truth. Like, he never, ever, ever, ever swayed. And even in his interrogations, he's the guy that was like, I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. Like, this might have happened, but it wasn't me. And so, like, a part of you as, like, a person has to, like, I've never been a cop, so I guess I don't know. But, like, I would feel like if someone sat there and was like, I truly have no fucking clue, even if you're like, no, he really did do it. Once you find out that, like, that person didn't live there or there was another person in the home or even compared, video, like, statement to photos or anything, you would have to be like sorry, Mr. Kelly, my bad. Oops. Never done. 
even after he is released from prison, everything else, they still refused to be like, we were wrong. We were wrong. Blows my mind. And so after I watched this, of course, I went and followed him on every little thing that could possibly follow him on. And I wanted to do this episode, but I was waiting because I felt like I needed to wait for some reason. And I'm glad I did because now I can successfully say that, hold on, I can tell you exactly. He, he got accepted into a college to play ball again which is amazing. And he is going to go play in Texas at the University of Texas in the fall. And so I, for one, am going to be excited to watch him play. And I'm never really ever been like, hey, college football is my thing. But this year... Oh yeah, I'm watching it and I hope I'm going to be able to watch him go into the NFL because when I say that he is a prodigy of football, the man is a prodigy of football. He can catch, he can throw, he can kick, he can, oh my God, he does it all. And when they played his films, I, this is why I couldn't, I judged him off of that. I was like, oh, yep, right there, solid motherfucker. Mm. And then I, And then I thought about it and I was like, yep. OJ played good ball too, <laughs> but no, he really was innocent. And so like, I don't know, it was just amazing. And this guy never let it show that it got to him. He has still stayed strong in his beliefs and in himself. His family never wavered. Complete strangers looked at his precious angel face and was like, no, I'm sorry that that's just not the vibe. I like that. He can't. And so, like, I don't know. It's just such a fucked up documentary. And, like, the way of the court system, it just is so fucked off that you literally can sit there and be like, no, I have done nothing wrong. I didn't do. And, like, I am going to let my fate lie on 12 people not thinking that these 12 people are going to see everything that I see and they're going to connect the dots and be like, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. And we're going to be over and done with. But recently I started watching another show on the oxygen channel called the jury speaks. And of course they're not using, I hope to God they use, Oh my God, I hope they do this show. That would be fucking cool. Cause it was a high profile case in Texas. Anyway, so far I'm only two episodes in number one episode. Of course, OJ fucking Simpson. I hate OJ Simpson. Oh, I loathe him. And they were like, you know what? We really think being sequestered had a lot to do with us saying he was guilty. You know how irritating that is to sit back and hear that y'all think you just wanted to go home to your family so fast that not guilty was the way to go. You know what I mean? I don't know. And then you find shit out like that and you're like, we should be able to retry OJ again with different people that have common fucking sense and do it again and but then that's what you think right I should have said that first because then you listen to him and then you find out that there when it comes to like letting him go they didn't just say he wasn't guilty they said he wasn't guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. That is two completely different things. Being found not guilty, just flat out not guilty, you weren't guilty. Being found not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt means there was some something kind of swayed them. And what it was, besides being away from their family, was the racist cop. And them 
chopping it up to another guy being prosecuted by white people and of course he didn't do it and it's just very irritating because now you know the dude came out wrote a book that you know what if i did it and like everybody knows now he fucking did it but i don't know so it just must be so terrifying if i ever got in trouble for like something big like that I don't know if I would. I think I might go to a judge, just straight to the judge. Let's present all my shit to him. Fuck a jury. Don't rely on 12 people because sometimes you don't know. And a lot of, not a lot of times I can't say that, but sometimes you find out that there was that one person that was going to hold out for you and be stand up for you and stand up for what was right and do what was right. But then... 11 other people were like it's your fucking fault i can't see my kids i want to go home and they're that one person's bullied and to be like okay you know what obviously i'm fucking dumb because 11 of you think you did it so i must go along with you and they become a follower and so i just ugh, good god and even in the great kelly one that one of the jurors after that was like when they found out that he went was going to be sentenced to jail for the rest of his fucking life, even she was like, wait, what? No, wait. If I would have known that, I would have held out because I don't think he deserves that. Like, are you kidding me? You let... it When someone's life is in your hands... You can let yourself be manipulated and go against what you believe in and let someone just go and rot just so you can go fucking have dinner at five o'clock. Blows my mind. Blows my mind. I tell you, I just don't even, some shit you can't even comprehend, you know what I mean? So yeah, that was my football episode. Is It's called Outcry and I just believe that this guy, I'm glad I got to find him truthfully. So that way I can now watch a good, good, solid year, good season of college football. And then I just, I don't know. The show touched me, man. Like people like that. And, like, the guy didn't... Nobody's been convicted of molestation of these two children. The one children, for sure. The other little boy, turns out, the lead cop went and found that family and was like, Hey, didn't your little boy get molested? Are you sure? Maybe you should talk to him. Maybe you should talk to him. And every time the little boy said no, they were like, Well, maybe you should ask him again. Maybe he's wrong. He is just four. And that's another thing, too, is like, how can you sit there and say, oh, well, he's four, so he doesn't really know. And then also at the same breath, sit there and be like, well, he's four. He knows. I mean, you can't. It's either one or dose. I don't take anything my four-year-old says to the bank. I don't. Because she's four. And her fucking imagination is insane. Now, if I ask her something and she tells me the same thing more than once without changing her story, that right there, I'll take that shit to the bank any day. But if you make, if she makes up crazy shit all the time, she always has a murder story. She's four. Things die around her all the time. Nothing truly ever does. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? But she's four. She thinks it's funny. And because she watches a show, a little girl named Carly on YouTube. I don't know, it's a whole other episode. I can get into venting about children on YouTube. But, uh, yeah. So I just, I don't know. It was just very, very eye-opening. And very, a big blessing on his part that he was only locked up for four years and it wasn't decades later that his truth finally came out. And now he, he still has a chance to be a dad be an NFL fucking star and you know what I mean? Like he still has a life. And so it's just one of those things that's just, 
you're glad your truth came out when your truth came out. It sucks that he had to go through all that shit, but he is one lucky, lucky guy that his life was not taken away forever and only a very short amount of his time was taken. So I don't know the fact that he gets to go to college and play ball and everything else really just shows you that God works in mysterious ways because that's just a blessing and I'm excited to watch him play. I love football. So that's the episode on that note. Um, don't forget you can still, it's the 18th. I'm going to do the winner on Monday's episode. I'm going to reach out to that person first and then, you know, say who the winner is. And then next weekend, we pop, lock, and drop it for the best fucking concert put on in Idaho Falls in a year's time. Going to be the greatest show of the summer. It's going to be the best way to start off that summer. I know everybody's chunky and y'all haven't danced or shook it for a minute. But on the 26th, come out to the blackout. Watch some amazing performances. Amazing talented artists. Come and meet the funniest fucking podcast ever. It's being put on by the Jeff and Greg podcast. And I literally adore them so much. It's not even funny. And we are able to do our giveaway because of them. I even had to let them know where I live. I gave them my address. And now I guess they can come and kick my door in and deliver me sunglasses, which is fine. If you want to find out what I'm talking about, guess what? You gotta go listen to their podcast. They talk about me. I talk about them. So it's not as creepy as it sounds. I There's love on both sides. Everybody shows love. Loves all the way around. And I just adore them. I really do. They're super fucking funny. And their one friend, Blake, is super funny. And I get to see him every morning and bullshit with him. So it's just, I've found my people and I just adore them, to be completely honest. So, like I said, we're going to, I'm doing, they're not doing it. I'm doing it. It is a giveaway. And to get this giveaway, all you have to do, it is super fucking easy, is go onto iTunes, leave a review, screenshot it and send it to me, and then bam, you can come. Well, you can come anyway. You can buy tickets. Not from any of the artists or Jeff and Greg, because that's how fucking popping this show is going to be, according to them. You can only go to their sponsors. And so you can only go to, um, I think, like Soda Tsunami, I believe, is one of their main ones that have tickets left. If I understand it right, I don't know. Um, there's a taco place, like, fuck, what's, like, Los Plot? Oh, fuck, I'm not good at taco place names. Go. La Las Vegas. I don't fucking know, man. I can't say it. I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> I can't list off their sponsors this time. Last time I had it written down. I don't have it written down. Get at me though on Facebook and I can send you the links and you can find your way there. Or you can just come to the door and pay to get in that way and come have a good night. I am just beyond excited. I don't even know. I'm counting down the days like it's fucking Christmas. I'm so excited to have something good happen and just hang out with my brothers, have a good time, meet these two. Because even when I got the tickets for the giveaway, I had full intentions on paying for them too. 
I was, I was all proud of myself and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to. And since my weird sleeping schedule or whatever, um, Jeff was sweet enough to come and put him in my mailbox. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'll get a chance to meet him because I really want to. And then he messaged me like a ninja and was like, they're in your mailbox. And I'm like, fuck. And so I paid him super, super fast to be like, look, I'm responsible and I'm adult. Respect me. <laughs> and then he was like, uh, no worry. And I'm like, well, fuck, dude, I already paid you. So he rejected my payment and said, your money is no good here. And gave me the tickets to do my giveaway. So it was very sweet of him. And so he even was going to let the world think that I purchased them too until his podcast. Until then his co-host was like, oh, we would have given them to you for free. And he's like, well, I did. So, you know, it was swell. They are just truly nice. And I've gone further back into their episodes. And I'm starting not to like them. Because they're really good guys. Like nice, adorable husbands. They fucking treat their wives according to them on their podcast. Really good. Super nice to them. Jeff, it seems, is always making his wife something. Like, that'd be awesome. You know? Just cool stuff. Their wives seem cool. And I don't know. I just, I was like, oh, shit. They're nice guys damn it. But whatever. Maybe I'm just salty in life at the moment. I wonder why. But yeah, so they're super great husbands <laughs> and makes me salty. So not even just their new stuff is good. I've gone very far back. So I can honestly say that I'm a true fan of their show. And I want one of their hoodies because it says fuck the Beatles on the, like on the back or the front. I don't know, but just fuck the Beatles is amazing. <laughs> but yeah, anywho, come on the 26th, come hang out with them, come and thank them for putting on the coolest show that we're all going to see in a minute and just have a good time. You can drink. Don't get too crazy because, like, we ain't trying to be your babysitters. You know what I mean? If you're going to come and drink, be a responsible adult. I hate when shows and shit get fucked up because people want to be stupid and act like children. So come have fun. It's 18 or older. So, unfortunately, little babies can't drink. But you can... Never mind, I won't say that because that would be bad for their show. That's not good publicity. Anywho, 18 or older because they are very, very vulgar and I adore it. And so, yeah, come, have fun. I don't really care about the giveaway. The giveaway is great. No one's really participating. Like, we have some participants, but not a lot. But mainly, I just really want this show to be amazing and awesome. And I just want to hang out with people. <laughs> so, I'm just super excited. So, I really don't care. The tickets will be given to someone who, uh, p people who have participated. But Mainly, I just want to rep the show because the show is going to be awesome and I'm super fucking stoked for it. So, just remember the blackout in Idaho Falls on the 26th going to be the best thing that's ever happened, I think. I'm going to say that confidently. So, come meet me, meet them, hang out with them. I have nothing to do with their show except for attending it and being an obnoxious fan. So, yeah. And they owe me sunglasses, which I will accept a hoodie in exchange. Or just being able to come onto their show in exchange would be great. But yeah. Anyhow. So you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to try to get this fucking person I don't want to say her name on my show and then hopefully next week we can do her stuff hopefully so we'll see but other than that you guys have a great 
great week and and we'll be back all right bye guys and please keep in mind my brother is still missing his name is nikos tesman he is 511 he has a tattoo across his back that says ghost he has dirty blonde hair he's kind of getting balder actually so look for like a bald spot he likes to skateboard around and ride the bus around California, around the Oakland area, kind of. Um, he was last seen and liked going to Washington Park in Alameda, Alameda, California. He has not talked to his mother or reached her or done anything since February of 2020. We were involved in asking help from the Oakland Police Department, and that has not gone anywhere. So we have turned to the Sheriff Lumpkin here in Idaho, and she has taken over this. And the number for her is 208-879-2232. If you have any information, you can also contact her on Facebook. It's Sheriff Lumpkin. And once again, his name is Nikos Tesman from the California area. His mother lives in Clayton, Idaho. And we would just love to get any information anybody has out there and just keep his name out there. So if you've seen him, heard of him, anything like that, please let me know. And we truly, truly appreciate everybody sharing it and praying for his safe return. Thank you.